Psalms 122, verse 6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. This verse right here is one that many use to teach that as Christians, we are mandated to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And by the way, you'll be blessed if you do. But is that the case? Is this passage a biblical mandate for us today to pray for Jerusalem? Is there something special about praying for Jerusalem versus praying for Chicago or literally any other city on the planet? Let's look at some context from verse 1. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And then sure enough, when we get to verse 9, it says, because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. So we see here why Jerusalem was special. It was because the house of the Lord was there. Now, here's the big question. Is the house of the Lord there today? Well, I think we all know the answer to that. Jesus came along and he said that the Father was looking for those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. And Jerusalem wasn't going to be the place where everyone had to go anymore. And that day has come. We see in Matthew 23, 37, Jesus said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? And ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. We see that because of Israel's rejection of Jesus and Messiah, their city came under great judgment and it was destroyed. And shortly after Jesus made that curse on Jerusalem, we have the Olivet Discourse where they're looking at the buildings of the temple and Jesus said there wouldn't be one stone left upon another referring to the temple. And sure enough, in that generation that took place and that city was wiped out, the temple was gone. That temple was replaced with the temple of Jesus' body, a temple that they destroyed. And three days later, he raised up again. So then what was the point of that first temple? Well, the book of Hebrews tells us. Hebrews 9.1 says, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of a divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. Verse 8, the Holy Ghost this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come an high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And that holy place that he entered into, was it that temple that was there in Jerusalem? No. Verse 24 tells us, For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Christ poured out his blood on the mercy seat in heaven. That temple that was on earth, it was a temporary thing. It was a figure for the time then present. And understand, God's done with that. And in Hebrews, we see in chapter 13, he closes out his letter saying, Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate, without the gate of Jerusalem, outside the temple area. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. There is no special city for believers anymore. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside all of us. If you are saved, the Holy Spirit dwells within you. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? 1 Corinthians 6.19. We understand that now. So, why this call back to Jerusalem? It's not necessary. It's not needed. You say, well, you know, I want to pray for Jerusalem. Well, then good. Go ahead and pray for Jerusalem. But there's no blessing over praying for Jerusalem versus praying for Chicago or New York or any other city for that matter. 
Pray for whatever city you like. You say, well, I, I want the prosperity that comes with that. And, you know, if prosperity is your motivation for prayer, I don't really know what to tell you. But at the same time, if you're insistent on getting prosperity uh, for your prayers, you know, the Bible does say in Galatians 6.10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. You know, why don't you be a blessing to those in your local community, to your neighbors? Why don't you especially do good to those within your local church? That's what we should be concerned about today, not what's going on in Jerusalem. Frankly, it's a big distraction anymore. And so I would call on all believers to get in on the new covenant and understand we have no continuing city. We are strangers and pilgrims on this earth, and we're waiting for the return of Jesus Christ. So I hope this was helpful to you and answered any questions you might have about that. Thank you for watching this. God bless.